ஸ்ரீ குரு பியோ நம யூஷுவலி வி வில் ஸ்டார்ட் வித் அன் இன்ட்ரடக்ஷன் பட் திஸ் டைம் ரிகார்டிங் துளசி இட் நீட்ஸ் நோ இன்ட்ரடக்ஷன் ஒய் பிகாஸ் இட்ஸ் வெரி மச் பாப்புலர் ஈவன் இன் த வெஸ்ட் வி நோ தட் இன் ஆல் த விஷ்ணு டெம்பிள்ஸ் வி கெட் துளசி ஆஸ் த மெயின் பிரசாதம் லார்ட் விஷ்ணு லைக்ஸ் த மோஸ்ட் ஆல் த டிவோட் இஸ் டு பை அண்ட் ஆஃப் வித் துளசி டு த பிலவட் கிருஷ்ணா வித் அட் மோஸ்ட் லவ் பக்தி and stories about the birth or origin of tulasi from the puranas and also about the health benefits and things like these people are very much aware of them but a few things about tulasi and that too very important it seems people are not that much aware of it that is when to pluck and when not to pluck tulasi and by mistake if one plucks on those prohibited days what sin will he incur this is very important and why are we talking this is because one may not know the greatness of tulasi and that's not a grave mistake too not everybody knows everything all the time right so not knowing things is not a problem but doing something wrong is a problem because we have to face the consequences right like suppose you have some health issue and you check with your doctor and he then prescribes a few tablets for you now the point is let's assume the prescribed medication will certainly address the concerned health issue but what if you take the tablet in different doses at different time what will happen the medication not just fails to address the health issue it might even lead to extra complications that's why first knowing how and when to do that is when to pluck tulasi is a critical thing so in this video we will be covering mainly when not to pluck tulasi and also some very common questions like what kind of tulasi is it shweta or krishna tulasi or is it leaf or sprouts of tulasi that is to be offered to the lord which mantra to recite while plucking tulasi and many such interesting things and especially some of them are not widely known we share them here quoting the references directly from the scriptures some of them bhagwan himself had said now before knowing all of them as usual similar to our other videos we have provided time segments for each section separately it will also help you for a quick check in future So first thing we will begin with how and from where should we get tulasi for our puja So many of us might have seen some people waking early in the morning getting ready with tracks and shoes and all that for a brisk walk in a nearby park After finishing while getting back home they will be checking here and there either in the park or in some of the houses nearby thinking from where shall we get some flowers and tulasi for our puja today It's probably a very common thing for many but here comes the first mistake asnatva that is without taking bath sopanat kas tathaiva cha similarly wearing shoes and all one who plucks tulasi leaves will certainly goes to a horrible hell this is a verse from padma purana so very first thing to note is one should not pluck flowers and tulasi without bathing and wearing shoes or sandals oh okay then henceforth i'll make sure i will not do these mistakes but then is it okay to pluck tulasi from park or from neighboring houses mm, it's kind of okay but still it's little tricky in the first place how will you ask your neighbor if you need some tulasi will you even ask or just take it suppose suppose you ask them like request them to give some tulasi leaves for doing puja this requesting part is actually considered as begging this is not allowed because one should not beg for tulasi and if you just take it without their notice then that is theft is it okay to steal that too for worship but surprisingly in a sense even stealing is permitted that is if you are collecting tulasi for your nitya puja daily puja then it is not considered stealing but if your puja is for a special prayer or for a special purpose then it is not allowed let's break it down first in puja it is of two kinds one is nitya and the other is kamya that is you have some wish and you do puja mainly to get that wish fulfilled this kind of puja is called kamya and the ordinary puja that we do daily without any specific desire in our heart that's nitya puja and since this is so if you're doing puja with a specific desire or wish with flowers and tulasi that's taken from some other place it will not yield fruit that is your wish will not be granted plus it is also considered as stealing hope it's clear now and now some may think it seems the only best option left out is to simply buy tulasi and offer it to the lord 
why to make much fuss about all this easy peasy right but you know what even this option is also prohibited in the shastras you should not buy flowers and tulasi and use it for worship purposes unless there is no option at all to procure tulasi in the worst case one may buy them but that too with money earned through proper dharmic means and if you just pass for a moment and think what are we doing here asking somebody or buying them for money and thinking if our prayers will work or not should we do all these silly things for just few tulasi leaves instead how wonderful will it be to just grow a beautiful tulasi plant in a small pot and then offer it to our beloved lord padma purana says those tender hands that grows tulasi plant and gathers tulasi leaves for lord vishnu they are very fortunate on earth that too in kali yuga also in skandham it says one who plants this extensively beneficial tulasi plant in his house he will never have to face poverty and let there be no doubt regarding this do you know how many puranas talk about the great merits of planting or growing a single tulasi plant in one's house narada purana brahma vaivarta vishnu dharmotra garuda mahapurana padmam skandam shiva mahapuranam devi bhagavatam so you see one can find so many references about these in these scriptures so much punya for all these little acts like growing tulasi watering it and then to get rid of the weeds and other small grasses that have grown near the tulasi plant's root and also especially in the month of vishakha that is around may june time where it is peak summer in india watering tulasi plant daily is even more special and then to put some cow dung as manure at the roots of tulasi plant making salutations to tulasi devi doing pradakshina reciting stotras of praise and all that yields so much of punya just pause the video for some time and read all those verses that we have collected for you maybe that's the reason why in the olden days knowing all these benefits they made sure to grow at least one tulasi plant placed within a madam in every house tulasi madam is usually a structured a decorated earthen pot for planting tulasi and especially to do tulasi puja and things like that you know there is a special merit mentioned in skanda purana kartike mahatmya for growing tulasi in tulasi madam and when you hear these kind of verses with huge lists of merits mentioned some of us might think how come one can get so big rewards for doing very little acts that too that can be done so easily does it really work this way yes it's all about doubtless faith not just these acts but whatever our actions may be it's always proportionate to the faith that one's action will also be relating exactly to this frame of mind we would like to quote a verse from padma purana one to whom in all of his many births lord vishnu happens to be the favorite deity only to him it's natural to have faith in worshiping vishnu with tulasi leaves so it looks like to have faith in these matters the force seems to come from many many past births and we should ask ourselves if we possess such faith naturally or we need to cultivate at least from now on all right now we will see some of the very common questions that people get regarding tulasi offering we know generally tulasi comes in two varieties that is shri tulasi krishna tulasi which one to offer to the lord shri tulasi is the white one shweta tulasi which will be in light green color the other one is krishna tulasi the dark one with violetish shade just like this one similarly in the moon's faces too we have the bright fortnight and the dark fortnight shukla paksha krishna paksha white black referring to this the lord himself says in skanda purana just like how the dwadashi tithi that falls in both the moon's face dark and white is favorite to me likewise whether it is dark one or that which is not dark both varieties of tulasi are my favorite so there is no distinction both can be offered to the lord now let's move to the next question is it leaves or sprouts which one to use and why we raise this doubt is because in some places in the puranas we see the word tulasi dala being referred that dala means leaves and again in few other places in the puranas we also happen to see the word manjari being used in those verses for now consider the word manjari to mean sprouts since this being so 
where both leaves and also sprouts are mentioned both can be used for puja but an added note regarding the word manjari which literally doesn't mean sprouts but the young tender flower not the dried one but like this it has got a very good aroma since it is set as patra sahita manjari we should choose tulsi sprouts together with the tender flower that's what is considered special and the best one but if you can't get one like this then leaves are also okay now we will get to the climax question that is when to pluck and when not to pluck tulsi this is very very important vaidhritau cha vyatipate bhauma bhargava bhanushu parvadvaye cha sankrantau dwadasham sutagadvaye tulasim ye vichinvanti te chindanti hare shiraha this sloka that is just read now gives us a list of days on when not to pluck tulasi we will anyway get to that in some time but the main highlighting point to note is it says one who plucks tulasi on these prohibited days te chindanti hare shiraha that is he plucks or chops lord vishnu's head this is from the text dharma sindhu not just there but in many other scriptures where statements like te krintanti hare shiraha tai chinnam hari mastakam that conveys the same meaning is also to be found considering this to be a very important thing to note they must have mentioned like this so let's learn this with little extra seriousness and follow it accordingly now let's see what are all the prohibited days in weekdays bhauma bhargava bhanushu that is tuesday friday and sunday one should not pluck tulasi in the tithis that is in the moon's phases amavasya pournami dwadashi new moon full moon and the 12th phase of the moon should also be avoided next comes sankranti sun's entry day into each zodiac rashi like mesha vrishabha mituna right in other words according to the tamilian's calendar first day in every month should be avoided tithi vara nakshatra yoga karana these five put together is called panjanga the vedic time system in this we have already covered tithi and vara that is moon's phase and weekdays now comes yoga there are totally 27 yogas and in that only two should be avoided that is vaidhruti and vyatipata and yes we can sense it some of you should be feeling a little dizzy since things are getting slightly over the head as the list grows slowly right but you know what if you want something or to attain something you have to take some effort apply yourself only then you'll be able to get the result also just pause for a moment and think how many of us know the simple panchanga details for today that is what's today's tithi or nakshatra maybe you should start to know it at least from now on and it is so simple too nowadays you can find these details freely available in many apps websites also one can very easily access these details in the wall hanging daily calendar at home and just by knowing what's today's tithi nakshatra that is daily panjanga itself will earn you great punya like dheerga ayu long life good wealth etc maybe because kali's effect in this yuga that one should not earn punya that easily it seems like that's the reason why majority of the people don't have faith and take effort in these simple matters but we will anyway learn them and certainly it's not a rocket science to find it that hard okay let's move forward so far we have seen that both the yogas vaidhruti and vyatipata one should not pluck tulasi next manvadi and yugadi should also be avoided let's not go much into the details just consider a set of 18 days that falls on every year 14 days for 14 manus and 4 days for 4 yugas totally 18 days should also be avoided for plucking tulasi that's it the list of prohibited days are covered but we should also know when not to pluck that is regarding timings one should not pluck tulasi after the noon and also not during sandhya time that is during both the twilights and also night time should also be avoided having applied oil upon oneself one should not pluck tulasi also during ashocham or teet that is according to the shastras on few occasions like birth of a child or death of a close relative we are considered unclean and also sometimes mentally disturbed so in those days too one should not pluck tulasi that's it it's over what you mean that's all with so much of restrictions piling one after the other we are in doubt as to when we can actually pluck tulasi yeah 
we heard that but your doubt and question seems to be valid one because if you do puja to our beloved krishna daily then we will have to get tulasi on a daily basis right in fact there is a special vrata puja called laksha tulasi puja where one has to start this puja in the month of kartika and worship lord vishnu with a thousand tulasi leaves for three months daily and when you have such pujas prescribed by the scriptures itself you will have to pluck tulasi on a daily basis right with so much of prohibitions to pluck tulasi are already listed out how could we even observe these vratas right even for such cases we have solution given by the shastras old ones at that which is used at least once should not be used again that is they refer this classification into two categories one is paryushitam and the other is nirmalyam generally whether it is flowers or even water that is brought a day before is not usable for puja the next day it is considered old or paryushitam not fresh but just like ganga jal or the ganges water tulasi is also considered sacred always it is not considered to be paryushitam or it is not considered old at all similarly the flowers that is already decorated upon the deities that which is brought in the left hand or that which is brought in the worn dress or in dress below waist and also those washed in water in all these cases those flowers should not be used again but tulasi is not so you can use it again though we get to know from scriptures that one can use tulasi that is plucked 6 or even 10 days old there are even more supporting statements to say that specially tulasi alone can be used how many ever times you may want statements like even if it is very old that which is fallen on the ground or in the water bodies even that is used for worship too can be used again after washing it once but still having said all this it is always good to use when it is fresh the more your effort is the more you are devoted to all these disciplines rules and regulation you can see for yourself that bhakti towards krishna grows in you so do it with love and passion plus just think if you keep plucking tulasi leaves daily what will happen to the plant to tulasi devi how much more she can bear all this all right we will also cover some of the exceptions to the list we have already said that on amavasya one should not pluck tulasi right but if it is only for worship purpose and not for medicine or other reasons then it is okay to pluck tulasi on amavasya too also in the worst case you can also buy from flower shops to dive deep into these matters you may also check the link in the description among all the chick list dwadashi is very very important at any cost one should never pluck tulasi on dwadashi tithi which is the next day after ekadashi tithi but if you say oh god i must have plucked tulasi on many such dwadashi tithis unknowingly all these days what should i do now if a child watches the father doing puja and tries to imitate him by offering flowers but in left hand what would the god do will it accept the offerings or punish and suppose even after growing up as a man if you still do this childish mistake knowingly then what so all it matters is it is considered a mistake only when you do it purposefully this we should keep in mind and nothing to bother so by now we should be knowing something about tulasi oh no that's not the right word actually we know way better and more information regarding how to pluck tulasi than before that's a good thing right but we are actually plucking tulasi to offer it prayerfully to our beloved lord vishnu so the main bhakti element itself is missing in this discussion so far and we'll also see what's that now that is as usual waking in the morning after taking bath without sandals and before noon why are we reiterating this is because nowadays for many of us our work shift timings vary drastically right and because of that waking time itself is now around 11 or 12 so just keep in mind regarding the plucking time considering the practical difficulties and also to stress on the ritual's importance we are pointing it out again all right now going near tulasi one has to do namaskara do pradakshina recite a stotra and only then you have to pluck the leaves and for that there are many beautiful tulasi stotras available and especially there is a short and sweet eight names of tulasi which itself can be considered as stotra maybe we can collect all these and make a separate video on this but for now considering everybody's mindset we will share here a small tulasi namaskara mantra and this can also be considered as a stotra yan mule sarva teerthani yan madhye sarva devata yadagre sarva vedascha 
tulasim twam namam yaham that's all it's a very small one the meaning of this mantra is this in whose root resides all the holy tirthas and in whose middle portion that is in the branches resides all the deities the gods and in whose tips resides the whole of the vedas to that holy tulasi i offer my prayerful namaskara with this prayer do pradakshina three times and then pluck the leaves now mantra to recite while plucking tulasi tulasya amrita sambhute sada tum keshava priye keshavartham lunamitva varada bhava shobhane or aradhanartham purushottamasya lunami patram tulasi kshamasva o tulasi devi you who is always very dear to lord keshava krishna and who was born out of amrita only for the sake of worshiping lord keshava the supreme lord purushottama i am plucking you so please don't be sad but be cheerful also please forgive me for this act of plucking and kindly extend your boonful grace upon me you can say this or there is a couple of verse in padma purana having very similar meaning there it says after reciting those two verses you have to clap twice and then pluck the leaves very interesting to know these customs isn't it not sure if this custom is still in practice but when you share these kind of things to those who have faith in these matters it will inspire them in a big way also it will yield you great merits punya finally when you pluck the leaves make sure you don't shake or break tulasi branch if you accidentally do so then tulasi lord vishnu's heart gets hurt by this act see how intricate we are getting into just for plucking tulasi so it's not that easy to simply pluck and offer tulasi to the lord but at the same time if you are taking things seriously to learn all this and do it religiously with faith then you are sure to get the result so pluck tulasi with tender hands and worship our beloved krishna with love bhakti may lord vishnu's blessings and tulasi devi's grace be upon us forever gopika jeevana smaranam govinda govinda